Hey, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Laura Bailey and I'm a senior lecturer in English language and linguistics. Great. Um, and why did you choose the module that you chose um, to look at the diversity aspects of it? The module that I chose is a first year module. It's called Grammar for Everyone, which is an optional first year module on our degree programme and it's available as wild. And the reason that I chose it is because there's often a sense that grammar as a theoretical subject, diversity isn't really relevant to it that there, there's no need to, to consider these issues. But I wanted to show students that grammar is very relevant to issues of inclusivity and diversity and um, diversity, and that um, it does affect the real world. Great. Um, and how did you do it in the first instance? What did you think about? Well, I actually wrote this module with those things in mind. It's only been running for two years. And so when I wrote it in the first place, I already, I didn't have to update an existing module that had been running for 10 years. I, I could do it from scratch. Um, and so as I was doing it, I just always bore in mind um, a few key things. So I tried to make it as accessible as possible in terms of the lecture slides, you know, putting alternative text on pictures, things like that. Um, I tried to always make the content as inclusive as I could. And I tried to do things like bearing in mind if I used an example from a particular language, I would include an image of the people who speak that language to remind students that we're not just looking at data, we're talking about communities. Um, and then I also, when I talked about the topics, I always tried to relate a grammatical topic to the real world and the effects that it can have. So when we're talking about, for example, non-standard grammar, I linked to some court cases where non-standard grammar has actually had um, a real effect um, on people's lives. In particular, um, I talk about the Trayvon Martin um, shooting where one of the key witnesses was really disregarded because she wasn't speaking standard English but her own variety um, and we also talk about how things like grammatical gender um, can be reflected in things like non-binary gender in real life um, and I also um, set as one of the assignments the students had to pick a book for the reading list. It didn't have to be a book. It could be an article or anything else. Um, they had to pick an item for the reading list, which would increase the diversity of those reading lists. And that was something that uh, we talked about um, in the class. So we had discussions about why the books we refer to are so often by, you know, elderly white men and why that can be a problem. And then this was only worth about 10%, but they had to present their choice and say why it was a, a good choice and should be included. And then they put that onto a Padlet, which was on the Moodle page before they submitted it for assessment. Brilliant. And um, as part of all of that, was there anything that you think um, in hindsight that you kind of sort of took from the, from the process or something you learned that you think would be good to share yeah, I think in the first year that I ran the module, um, I didn't go far enough, first of all. So I kind of sort of tentatively introduced these things and then realised that students are actually really interested. So the second year I was much more, I included much more discussion of, of social justice kind of issues um, and the importance of them. And the other thing is that the first year I did it, the reading list assessment, I wasn't quite explicit enough about what we were doing and why. I said, you know, we should diversify the reading list, pick a book and ideally not be by a white man. And then the students, like lots of them came back with books by David Crystal, who is very lovely, but an elderly white man. And um, so the next year I was, ex I was very explicit about why we're doing it and that they had to pick a book by somebody that would diversify the list in some way. And I allowed some flexibility there. Um, and, you know, one student came back and said, well, actually, you didn't even talk about um, non-binary gender um, when you were setting this assignment. And I was like, yeah, no, you're right. Actually, I didn't. And, you know, good choice. So I did allow flexibility, but I was much more explicit about what we were doing. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks.